October 3rd. Woo So what happens today is we sort of unlock a door. It's a very empowering door. This this door that we unlock now makes it so that there is not a single quadratic equation that we cannot solve. So um, what, what would happen prior to today's lesson is roughly half of quadratic equations that you try to solve, you just hit a wall and you stop and say something like, I can't solve this. Or you would say like, it has no solution. Um, justifiably so. But today we turn the key and unlock the door. And now when what's going to happen happens, you're like, I got this. Um, so we need to talk about the letter I. And I is actually going to be at the heart of what we do for at least the next two weeks. Because after, after this week, there's a whole big unit on complex numbers and complex numbers are uh, based on the existence of the number i. And I know I said the number and it's a letter, but i is a number. So to this point, prior to today, if I had asked you what's the square root of negative four, if you understand square roots, you should wholly understand that that ain't happening, right? The essence of a square root is that I have to multiply something by itself that makes negative four. It's not happening. You know, you just have like fourth, fifth grade math level and you understand that if you square negative two, you get four. And if you square two, you get four. So you're like, well, what in the what am I supposed to do? So there's an entire second half of the number system. To this point in your existence, you have worked on the left half, which are called real numbers. And then on the right hand side, there's an entire set of numbers that are called imaginary numbers. And it's kind of a funny name, like they're not really there. Um, but it's it, I imagine that the term comes from that they can't physically, tangibly be looked at on a graph the way real numbers can. So anyhow, uh, welcome then to the rest of your life. In order to simplify or evaluate square roots like this, we merely have to understand one basic fact. And this basic fact will be at the heart and soul of everything you do uh, for a long time now. And it is this, that I is representative of the square root of negative one. This in mathematics is what we refer to as the imaginary unit. It's the fundamental, it's the building block of the entire imaginary number system, i.e. the other half. There are real numbers, and now there are imaginary numbers. And so once you understand how I works, for, t for the purposes of what we're doing today, that's why this will be a very short lesson, there's not much to this. What we understand is that the square root of negative four is actually equivalent to the square root of four bless you, times the square root of negative one. And I'm going to leave that up there so you can get that down and make sure you're on board. It's no different than any other time that we've made like a tree. If you have a square root and you break it down into two square roots, like if you had 12, you'd break it into root four and root three. I'm just breaking negative four into a good guy, four, and a leftover guy, negative one. Having said that, what is the square root of four? Mm -hmm. And what is the square root of negative one? So the answer to this is 2i. So when I evaluate the square root of negative four, I no longer pause and say, oh, I can't do this. Mr. Ahern, what did I do wrong? The, it's now a matter of, I got this. And again, that is a very powerful door to have open. It's just you, you, your muscles get a lot bigger, mathematically speaking. No more roadblocks. Let's take a look at another negative square root. What if I had the square root of negative 32? This root we're going to break into three pieces, which sounds like, wow, that's crazy. But it's really not that crazy. One of the pieces is obviously going to be negative 1, which leaves behind the part that we're familiar with, the 32. What's our go-to way to break down a root of 32? Good job. I'm so proud that you did not say the other things. Good, 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 good. So when I break down the square root of 32, I'm divvying it up into the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 times the square root of negative 1. Those three factors multiplied 
I mean, at this point in high school, we can't, we're not going to try to refute that that works. And so we're going to look now, and there are two evaluatable roots of the three. The first one is obviously the square root of 16 becomes four. Now, I'm going to write this down and you can write it if you want, but I'm going to tell you why we don't do this. If you go in the order that I've written it, you're going to write four root two I. And that's not okay. So hopefully this will take about one minute and this will be a conversation that if we have, it'll just be maybe a couple people here and there. You never put the I after a root. Can anyone think of a reason why? Yes, some people, and you might say, well, I promise I do raise my right hand. I solemnly swear to not make it look like that. We just don't play that game. We never put an I after a root because someone might think or mistake that it's the square root of two with the I inside the root. So to alleviate this ever even being a possible concern, you will always place your I in front of your root and behind any rational numbers. The four is the rational, the two is the root. So my answer is actually four I root two. You will always put your I after the real part, excuse me, after the rational part, before the irrational part. All right, let's practice again. <clears throat> How about the square root of negative 50? Good. So it's root 25, root 2. That's our normal. And then, of course, we have the obligatory imaginary unit that makes all this possible. When it's simplified and put in its proper order, what would this answer be? 5i root 2. Very good. How about the square root of negative 64? This one you can probably just do in your head, as, as you'll start to find with all of them, quite frankly. Uh, once you get on the I bandwagon, you realize this is nothing. It's just 8i, right? 8 comes from the 64. I is the imaginary, necessary imaginary unit. Okay. How about this one? about the square root of negative 80? Yeah, so we've you've done enough of this that you just know, you know things that you didn't know a year or two ago, but you know them now. You know that 80 is 16 and five. So we're gonna do root 16, root five, root negative one. What is my cleaned up answer? Very good. So that's what I is. And now what I have for you is just a couple of examples as to how this is going to now from this point on apply to our lives. So let's take a look at solving a quadratic equation that has imaginary solutions. These are someday you're going to come to understand. These are going to be solutions that you cannot physically see in place on the x-axis. So 9x squared plus 4 is equal to 4x. We're using the quadratic formula. And so what is step one? Move the, move the 4x over for sure. So we have 9x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0. So what's A? B. C. Good. And so from this point, it ought to be pretty cruise controlly. If you're thinking like, why are we, what we did this last week? Just wait for it. It's coming. Okay. So let's do this. So the quadratic formula demands that we first take the opposite of B, which is four. And then we do plus or minus the square root of 16 minus four blank blank all over what? 18, two times nine. What goes in my blanks? Good. And so you can see now for the first time that the, the back half of our discriminant is heavier than the front. Those numbers in the back aren't going to flip to plus. And so we're going to wind up with 16 minus a buttload. 
All right, and that's okay, because now we don't have to stop and say, what did I do wrong? We got this. And so inside the this, this square root, the discriminant, what we're really looking at here is 16 minus, what is that, 144? I think you might want to check my math. It's Monday and it's nine o'clock, so. But it's going negative, huh? Big time? Good. So let's do this. What is 16 minus 144? I guess you guys are gonna make me do it. Okay, so negative 128. So our discriminants is negative. Uh, last week we get here and we, per our teacher's advice, would have said, I must have done something wrong. Not anymore. It's, an, it's a root of a negative. I got this, man. So now we gotta do our normal ho-hum. And we're really thinking of it as how do I break up a 128? We're just gonna respect the negative by chucking an I in there when we're done. How do you split up a 128? There's a real slick way to do it. Here, I'll put the. Tienes que dividir por dos. Yes. So 64. that's it, 64 times two. How nice is that, that it worked for us so conveniently to just divide by two. So we wind up with a 64 and a two. You'll notice up on the television that I've already put the three roots and I've put the negative one in the last one. So what is my simplified version of negative 128 going to be? Perfect, you guys, 8i root two. Once this clicks, you realize it's not that different. So I'm now at a point where I can say x equals 4 plus or minus 8i root 2 divided by 18. These are imaginary solutions. They do not touch. These are not on the x-axis. And we'll, again, make that connection when we do graphing quadratics in a while, whenever that is, weeks. Don't know. But the triangle, the Dorito of doom still exists right here. Mm -hmm. And so I see that all of these terms can be divided by yeah. two. So my final answer is gonna be X equals two plus or minus four I root two divided by nine. Okay, business as usual. Any questions about that? We'll do one more. Let's do, um, I've got four in the queue, so I don't want to, and tomorrow's a work day, by the way, so we don't have, time's not a huge issue here. I, it's not going to affect the amount that you are asked to do at home, because, well, with a work day coming up, that should be exactly none. <laughs> but maybe we'll do a couple. Uh, what do we do first? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're we're moving two things instead of one because we understand that all we care about is making the x squared term. We want a to be a positive. So we're going to move all the junk to the left, which makes 6x squared. The 6x is going to stay positive because he doesn't move. The 7 does move. The, the negative 7 moves and becomes plus 7. And there we're prepped, ready to roll. What's a? B? A C? And we go. What's the first thing we write? All over. Good job, you guys. We're getting to that point with the quadratic formula where we're just setting it on cruise control. You know, you can almost do something else. It's getting pretty easy. Uh, in place of A and C, we're going to put six and seven. And yet again, as you will today, because I chose problems specifically, you'll see in every problem in today's homework that the discriminant is back heavy. It's always going to be something minus something bigger. I'm going to make sure that that happens. We want to practice with our imaginaries. And so uh, when you look at the numbers in the back, these three, four times six is 24 and 24 times seven is 168. So the math we're actually doing in the discriminants is 36 minus 168. 
super back heavy. 36 minus 168 is definitely negative. Negative how much? Okay, so we have x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 132 divided by 12. And it's just, again, it's just not that exciting and different. Now, I'm still thinking about 132. You know, how can I break down a 132? And that's where I see some of you feverishly going at your calculator. And that's exactly what you do at this point. You start dividing it by four and nine and 16 and all these numbers until you find the best one. I think four winds up being, yeah, four is the best we can do because the leftover is 33 and that's trash. So we're going to go off to the side and we're going to take the square root of one negative 132 and we're going to break it into the square root of 4 times the square root of 33 times the square root of negative 1. What does that simplify to become? Um, Perfecto. So we have negative 6 now. We have x equals negative 6 plus or minus 2i root 33 all over 12. And the, the triangle is as it always will be in play. If a number breaks out of the root prism, then the triangle needs to be considered. So what can 6, 2, and 12 all be divided by? 2, leaving us with a final answer of x equals what? Nice job. And I do want to do one. You can. I, I don't know how many of you are going to take more math classes. For some of you, not a lot of you, but for some of you, Algebra 2 is the last real math class you'll ever take. I don't know who you are, but for, for if you plan on taking more math classes, let me tell you this. Uh, for every one of me, you'll find occasionally one teacher who likes you to go further. And so to answer your question, uh, I'm not this guy, but for your preparation for like maybe a college professor or maybe Mrs. Eklund, I don't know how she likes her answers. Sometimes people will break their answers down further. You don't have to do this for me, but if you go in this direction, you see my red arrow there? If you follow the directionality of that arrow, that is the numbers negative three and six, that would break down into negative one half. And then we put plus or minus. And then we would put I root 33 over 6. I don't do that because I feel like it's more work than we need to do. But yes, to answer your question, could you go further? Yes. But you have to fairly divide the 3 by the 6 and then the other part by the 6 as well. So let's figure this to stop. And this, I think, is pretty widely accepted by more than half of math people. Well, more than half. We just agree. Call it good. So, I want to do another one for sure. Um, this one is 4x squared plus 10 equals 0. What do we do first? Nice job. So A is equal to 4, B is equal to 0, and C is equal to 10. Remember that the 0 is there because the middle term, the linear x term, is missing. So he would be 0x if we put him in there. In case anyone's, I'll just write it here. I would feel better. This is what it would look like if we felt so inclined. So having said that, let's dive right into the quadratic formula. X equals what? Good job. Good. I'm going to stop you there. Expert execution there, Alyssa. Remember that we've seen this before, that when B is 0, there's nothing that we need to put there where the yellow arrow is. 
And there's also nothing right there where the green arrow is because those would both be some spin on a zero, a negative zero or a zero squared. And it's like, well, what's the point? So good job on that. So this is going to be one where we just wind up without the triangle, right? This will just be a, can I simplify it straight down when I'm done or not? So I'm going to go and backfill the uh, A and the C. So A is 4 and C is 10. So what is inside of my square root? Good job. Negative 160 is my discriminant. And what's the best way to break down a 160? Yeah. It's the only way to break down. That's actually not true. It's the best way. Because uh, you could have used 4 and 40, but I probably would have yelled at you for that. So good job. So the square root of negative 160 over here off to the side is equal to the square root of 16 times the square root of 10 times, of course, the square root of negative 1. What's that come out to be? Four I. Nice job. So we have x equals positive or negative 4i root 10 all over 8. Done? No. Just because there's no triangle doesn't mean that reducing is not in play. Just you still look downwards and think, can I just simply reduce those? Yeah, totally. Divide them both by four. So what's my final answer? Right. So positive, negative, I root 10 over 2. Nice job. You guys feel like you got this? OK. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, today, you'll have time to work on your assignment. I put it in Delta Math. It's assignment number 14. Um, and it's a pretty short assignment. I want to say eight problems or something. I don't remember. But if they, if, if your assignment looks a little bit odd, like the, the question selection, it's because I chose them today. I think, unless I'm thinking of a different class. Let me look real quick. Oh, never mind. I lied to you. Uh, this I was thinking of um, something for my third hour. So you guys, this is this is business as usual. But you can see you can't probably read that. But I have a checkbox checked that says non-real solution. So that means you're only going to get answers with eyes. OK, and there's 12. Got it. Questions. All right. Let's do this. <laughs>